Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how I built this front rack, a little bit of a how-to and a walkthrough. Maybe you can uh, take some of the ideas and make your own rack or improve on it. But yeah, hope you like it. Cheers! So these are all the bits that we're making here. You're going to need a hacksaw, a file, a shifter and a drill and drill bits. Um, if you don't have those tools, you can check out my other rack tutorials. They're a little bit simpler. So I decided to build this out of flat aluminum and I just wanted a small rack, something that's not too crazy. It's just going to carry my backpack, maybe a skateboard and stuff to do errands on. I ended up drawing it up on Illustrator just to work out how much material I need to buy. And this was kind of a good way to work out the proportions of the, of the rack itself. Here you can see <laughs> I'm putting out all the measurements and just trying to work out how many of the flat bars I need. Turns out I need three and then also eight bolts as well. So here we are at the local Bunnings. You can see they sell all different types of sheet metal or sheet strips. And I decided on this thinner one. It's a three mil by 12 mil. You can see uh, I have a little bolt here to make sure the bolt will fit. That's an M5 bolt. But yeah, they have different strips as well. So if you want to make something a little bit thicker, a little bit more sturdier, you can just use a thicker, thicker strip. And here's the bolts. I was looking for some M5 bolts. They didn't have the ones I wanted, which were socket head. They only had it in black. So I ended up getting these normal silver ones. So now I got the bolts and three strips. And that turned out to be 2115. Here's what the strips look like. And this is what the bolts are, M5 by 10 millimeters, and I got 12 of them in a the pack. These bars are 12 by 3 by 1 meter. Alright, time to get building. So what I'm going to do is just mark it out. I just use a pencil, uh, make sure you measure twice. I'm making the main frame of the rack at the moment. Alright, here it is, all measured up. And the next thing to do is just give it a bend. You can use a shifter just to bend it like this, just on the line and turn it. But I uh, decided to use my uh, drill press or you can find any gap at your house where you can put, put it in something and push it down. But yeah, this metal bends pretty easy. It's just aluminum. I picked aluminum because it won't rust as much and it's easy to bend. Um, you can also do it from steel, I guess, if you want, but it'd be uh, a little bit harder to bend I think and you might need a bit of heat and this is what it looks like after it's all done these are just pre-bends to get them 9 degrees what I need to do is I just put them on the side of my bench here and then just really uh, use a lot of force and push it down just go slow when you do this you don't want it to uh, snap or anything but um, I think having the widest circumference at the corners helps that you can see here it's all done. I'm pretty happy with the bends. I think it turned out pretty good. Just take your time when you do it. And then I didn't cut the last bit because I just wanted to make sure it lined up. So I ended up just marking it, making sure it's straight from the top and the bottom and then giving it uh, yeah, just a hacksaw through using the other end as a guide. And that, that worked out pretty well. All right, once that's done, just give the ends a file and then just uh, give it a few bends to make sure it lined back up. If it's twisted, you can use your shifter to twist it back a bit. And yeah, this is what it looks like. All right, next up was the braces on the inside. So yeah, basically the same deal. Just mark it off and then give it a bend. I end up uh, using the, the same uh, drill press just to give it a bend. It could just fit in there. I figure I can bend it on here and cut off the excess if I need to and I end up using a little clamp to clamp it on because it's too hard to hold and just to push it down and bend it 90 degrees and there we have it you can see kind of how it looks here and then I end up using the inside to try to measure the best way to bend this I try to bend in the middle of these two lines with the curve going over and once the bend was done you can kind of see how it how it is. I cut off the excess and this is what it kind of looks like. It didn't sit as flush as I wanted it to but I think it's still, uh, still it's all right because I didn't account for the curve radius when I was drawing up my schematics. So yeah it's gonna stick out a little bit. And then once you do one you can use it as a guide just line it up with the other one and then create the same bends that way and try to get them as even as possible. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't 100% even, but I think it's going to be pretty, pretty close to what it needs. Um, and then here I'm just using a shifter 
for any extra spends that I need, any quick bends. Here I need to drill a hole now for the bolt to go through and just using a little punch to make a, a little groove for the drill to fall into. Sometimes you can use a punch as well. I end up using a screwdriver later on here, just marking more holes again. And then drilling the holes, you gotta start off with uh, just a small drill piece and then work your way up. I think I did one, two, three, four, five. If you go straight to a five millimeter drill bit, you might have uh, issues of it trying to drill through. And it was safer, yeah, just to work your way up. And here, just measuring the struts out. Once I had one strut measured out, I could cut off the other one. And then what I wanted to do was file off the, the corners and just round them off because I didn't want them uh, stabbing into any stuff because they're going to be on the outside. And then here, just using the screwdriver punch, just punching the hole for the drill to go through. And then, yeah, did both, both ends. Here I'm bending the brace that goes on the top of the rack. So yeah, I need to mark everything out and bend everything before I drilled, otherwise I have to keep changing out drill pieces. I think that was probably one of the main challenges with this rack is always having to mark stuff out, drill it, and then forget that I had to drill something else. But um, these bits were kind of all done and I wanted to get these braces on just to see how they fit and to see if the other parts I made fit well as well. So yeah, everything seemed to fit pretty well. Uh, you can see this uh, brace on the top. I wanted to tilt back a little bit so it lines up with the head tube, just like this. Um, what I decided to do was just drill it flush anyway, drill it flush against the other brace, and I'm gonna file a little bit off later. So yeah, this is just kind of how I marked it. And then punching it again. And then again, drilling all the pieces. Once you get the drill set up the right height, it's actually pretty easy in switching the drill pieces out. But you can see the drill pieces go from thinner to thicker here. Make sure you wear goggles and gloves if you need. I know I'm not wearing gloves, but if you need them. And then here, just putting it together, making sure it fits, making sure all the holes that you've done lines up. But you can see it all together here, looking pretty good, I think. I was pretty happy at this point. I just want to chuck it on the bike and you can see once I chucked it on it, it was like too low so yeah I guess I didn't measure it uh, high enough I thought it fit and I didn't take into account the braces would be a little lower I try mounting it to the axle here as well to the quick release axle to see if it pushed it up any higher but yeah no way so I decided to just at this point I want to make the cross brace to see how far to push the rack up before I uh, before I cut the struts again. So here I'm using one of the struts that's the wrong size to make the cross brace and I had to drill this to be M6 so it's a little bit larger and then yeah you can see a few bends later I got the cross brace on using the same bending technique and then now I was able to sit the rack on there and then really measure it to see how uh, how high these struts were. They ended up being, I think, uh, 400 millimeters. Um, so yeah, a, a bit higher than what I had before. And then I redid the struts again, uh, drill and round off the corners. But yeah, you can see now it's looking pretty good. All right, here we are. I took off the front brake so the cable didn't get in the way. And now I just have to align it and make some holes here and here and what I noticed was uh, this sits a little bit higher this sits a little bit higher than this one I don't think it'll matter that much but maybe I'll put a space in there or something uh, yeah that's basically it so yeah I just want to make sure it's level and then ideally I want it to sit the center of this over the axle. And yeah, I'll give it a cut and drill some holes. And then just want to make sure this is aligned. Sometimes it can turn a little bit and be, be off. You just want it in the middle over the wheel. 
and this is what's going to set it straight so try to measure it as best I can. All right you can see I just measured it here with the pencil and then this is the punch I use just an extension on the on my little ratchet system and yeah same thing again just punching the holes I had to measure the center of this and a good way to do this is try to center it and then you flip it upside down to make sure it lines up with the line. I did this a couple of times but then yeah ended up working out. And then here going through the drilling process again. I ended up using a G clamp here or C clamp here uh, because it was getting too close to my fingers and I didn't want to risk it. So yeah I just chucked the clamp on. And in here, finally putting the, the rack back on and everything was looking pretty good. All right, here it is. Pretty solid, I think. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut it here and then take all these stickers off, give it a buff up. And the last thing I wanna do is also, I wanna make this tilt. So you can see, just tilt a little bit more back. So it's in line with the, the head tube a little bit more. And how I'm going to do that is just file the inside edge here. And it'll give me a little bit more turn. All right, just freestyled this, but it turned out pretty good. And then here, just cutting off the excess on the brace. And then just, yeah, rounding the corners, giving a buff up on the drill press here, taking all the edges off, giving clean up. And yeah, this is basically everything. These are all the parts here. All I have to do is put it together now. And yeah, it wasn't too much to it. Sometimes if parts don't fit, you can uh, flip them around since there's two sides and it's kind of pretty much symmetrical. Um, but yeah, this ended up working pretty well for me. I did tighten the screws on uh, decently tight, so they hopefully they don't rattle off. And then here, just putting it onto the bike now. The thing looks pretty good. I think it's pretty pretty clean design. Putting the brake back on and make sure everything's nice and tight. And then after everything together, you can see how solid it is, give it a shake, how it even moves. I think there's a little play towards the front, but that's gonna happen because the beams are flat metal. And then here, I'm just giving it, seeing, uh, give it a little weigh test. This is two kilos, 2.2, .2, and I put it on, and it doesn't move at all. And then this thing is about 4.4. So about seven kilos all up. You can see it's starting to sag a tiny bit. But um, yeah, I'd say most racks around this size, the limit's five kg. So it ended up uh, being pretty good, I think. All right, and here's the final rack. Pretty stoked with it. I think it looks pretty good, pretty clean, pretty solid as well. I think if I have time, I might switch out the the little bolts to be uh, allen key. I think that looked a little bit cooler. So yeah, I think the most challenging thing was just kind of the trial and error and having to drill so many holes. But I think once you get that worked out, it actually is not that bad. I tested it on a few different roads and I went skating with my skateboard and a backpack on it. And yeah, it wasn't too bad at all. You get, you do have slight front sway towards the stays. But yeah, nothing really to worry about at all. I think my cables are a little bit long, that's why you hear the tapping on the front rack, but uh, I always switch up my bar, so I think I'm just gonna keep the cables this length for now. But yeah, overall I'm super stoked with this rack, super handy. I might add a little basket or I might just leave it for now, just because it fits the skateboard well. But yeah, hope you liked the video, hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment, I'll answer it. And yeah, thank you for watching, thank you for your support, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace!